Okay. Oh, rotate my phone. Oh, oh, I see. Hi, everyone. So I think I'm supposed to rotate this way. Yes. I hope that works. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this, the first Tuesday live for the fall season of 2020. My name is Lucas Simmons. I'm your holistic nutrition practitioner, and I'm based in the southern parts of Alberta, just in and around Calgary. So I've done these live videos every Tuesday for the last, I don't know, maybe two and a half years, and took the summer off for reasons of sanity, for reasons of other projects on the go, and for reasons that readership and listenership goes down in the summer. So I took the opportunity to really dive deep into other projects. And so here we are back first day of September. It's time to get back into things. Hope that this finds you well. And if you have any comments, pop them down in the comments below and I'll get back to you at the end of the broadcast. I don't have any comments showing up because they've changed the interface again. I don't know how these things work. Whatever. This is going to go up live on, or I'm going to upload it to the YouTube channel and to the IGTV side of things as well, because we are starting in on a month where we're focusing in on histamine things. Now, I've been busy at work with a colleague, Tracy Reed. She's brilliant, so smart, and we've been working on a cookbook and guidebook that we're calling Histamine Haven. And we're going to be diving into this kind of stuff for the fall, and we are hoping to bring to you a book in the new year. So it's very exciting news. But I thought it would be a really good time right now to dive into some of the basics of histamines. I can't believe I've never done a focus on histamines since I've been on these social media channels. So it's high time. Yeah, histamines. How do you know you have histamine issues? You've gone down the rabbit hole, you've done the research, and you find out you have histamine issues. Histamine issues are part of so many pieces of the puzzle for a lot of people, especially those who struggle with inflammation. So this is the work that we're doing. We're putting together this book so that you can help yourself in knowing what it is that is within your own power to help make the situation a bit easier to move through when histamines are part of the issue. So today we're going to start with the first video. Every Tuesday, 1 o'clock, I'll be here doing it live on the Facebook and then moving it to the other social media channels. And we're talking this week about those top three highest histamine-containing foods. If you're struggling with histamine stuff, know this. It is different from one person to the next. These are what I would say are probably the three most common high histamine foods. But know that if you have some type of allergic reaction, either food sensitivity reaction or an IgG mediated uh, food allergy reaction, there are so many histamines involved in that. Those foods that you react to could possibly be higher on the list for you. But I wanted to start with three of the highest ones that would be common to just about everybody because they contain a very high amount of actually naturally occurring histamines in their end product. And we've got three here today. The first one is uh, cured meats. The second one is going to be fish, especially canned fish and fermented foods. And then we're going to talk about maybe what else you can do instead of or ways to navigate through if histamines are an issue for you. So you'll know histamines are an issue because you may have hay fever, uh, acid reflux, migraines, eczema, interstitial cystitis. There's even now restless leg syndrome. You can link back to histamine issues. Estrogen dominance type things where you might get migraines the week before you get your period. There's tons of histamine issues that are can fall under any of so many different other categories. So if you do some research and figure out, oh, that shows up for me. Oh, I have eczema. Oh, I have migraines all the time. Oh, wait a second. My skin is itchy and I have hives all the time. There's a really high chance that histamines can be a part of the picture. There's also something called mast cell activation disorder. Uh, and that is an entirely different thing, but also involves the release of histamines on a regular basis. And it's this release of pent up histamines in your body that becomes the problem. It's not the histamines themselves that are the problem, I'll be clear. We need to figure out why is your body making so much histamine and why are you having such a problem clearing out those spent histamines. So one of the ways that histamines can become a little bit too much is when you're eating foods that happen to be high in naturally occurring histamines. Cured foods, bacon, salami, sausages, um, pastrami, uh, 
prosciutto even, uh, pepperoni sticks, like all of these cured meats are very high in histamines. A general rule is any food that is far away from being alive and fresh, the further it is from being alive and fresh, the higher the chances are of it developing histamines in the end product. Especially a little bit faster if it's an animal protein. That's why a lot of people, when they're struggling with histamines, if they take on a vegetarian diet for a few weeks, they actually start to feel a bit better. It's because the animal proteins can carry a lot of histamines in them. The catch here is that they also carry a lot of the nutrients you need to clear the spent histamines. Oh, so what are you supposed to do, Luca? Oh, that's where it gets complicated. Too complicated for a 15 minute video. <laughs> But cured meats are one of the higher histamine containing foods. So how can this affect you? If you know that histamines are an issue for you, then on those days where your eczema is starting to really flare up, on those days where the histamines are kind of not leaving you alone, or the migraines are just pestering your day and clouding it, making it hard to get through the day, or if you know you've had the urge to pee nonstop for the last week and you're not even drinking that much water, these are all possible histamine-mediated troubles or acid reflux. It's on those days you want to make sure that you do not have those super high histamine foods, including that cured meat. Save the bacon for when you're on holidays, when the stress levels are lower, and when those histamine things have reduced. The other high histamine food is fish. Fish tends to be pretty high histamines, and the problem is that it's bacteria that actually produce these histamines that are living on the flesh of the animal itself. So that's why fish and any type of other meats, um, any type of animal meat actually, has a higher chance of developing histamines faster than in any other type of food. So this is where the rule of the fresher, the better, starts to fall into place. So if you have histamine issues and say you love eating fish, but you know that when you have fish, your eczema flares up. Well, see if you can source fish that was frozen soon after catch. There's a producer out on the West Coast called Skipper Auto. They're great. Connect with maybe local fishmongers, fish providers here in your town, and see if they can bring in stuff that is... Uh, low in hit or that's been frozen soon after catch. I lost my count of time, so now I'm gonna go over. Ah, I won't. I'm gonna keep it to 15 minutes so I can post it in other spots. So yeah, fish can be one of those carriers of histamines, quite heavy in those histamines. It develops the bacteria on the fish develops those histamines at a faster rate than it would on any other type of food. So if you can find fish that was frozen soon after catch. Keep it frozen and defrost it in the fridge and maybe even cook it from partially frozen if you can. You'll have a better chance of reducing those histamines that could be a possible issue. Now the third and final thing is fermented foods. Sorry friends! Yes, fermented foods are high in histamines. Oh, that's great. Now what, Luca? Oh. So here's the deal. Ferments are high in, in histamines. But fermented foods can help fix the root cause for some people who struggle with histamine issues. I am one of those people. If you have leaky gut, if you have any type of issue happening at the gut level, when you start to introduce fermented foods, your ability to make this enzyme at the gut lining, called DAO, diamine oxidase, you're unable to make it very well. Either because there's something happening at the gut lining, you can't make it well, or there's a genetic issue, or you don't have the tools to make those enzymes. It can be one of many different things. This enzyme breaks down the histamines coming in through food. Because histamines are naturally occurring. It's not histamines that are the issue. Again, it's the issue of having the ability to clear it or not after they've come through. That's where the issue lies. So, or that you're producing so many histamines because your body perceives that you are in some type of danger on some level somewhere. That can be due to trauma. It can be due to a hypothalamus issue. It could be due to uh, a uh, dysbiosis or something happening in the body that is throwing it into inflammatory state. I know. There's like 82,000 different reasons. Do you see why it's complicated? I know. So, fermented foods, while they will eventually help to do some of that gut repair so that you're better able to make that DAO enzyme, in the beginning stages, fermented foods can be problematic. So when clients come to me, and I do a lot of one-on-ones with folks who are struggling with histamines, then we actually try to figure out and unearth where we think the ground zero would be for the histamine issue. 
Then we work at addressing that piece. And then we'll start bringing in some of those higher pieces that are higher, uh, that are good movers in helping to reduce the histamine issues at that root piece that may contain also some higher histamine content in the foods. Or we start to include some other foods that have those missing enzymes that you have a hard time making. And that's what we're going to cover in next week's video. So that is that. That is my top three foods that are the highest histamine containing foods that could be a possible problem for those who are struggling with histamine mediated things. If all of this feels really convoluted and complicated, it's because it is. <gasps> But I'm here to help. So I do lots of one-on-one -on -one work and some classes with histamine stuff. I have tons of stuff at the ready on my website. Just head to lucasimmons.com and you'll find lots of stuff on the website there. I will post some comments below for those who are maybe interested in trying to get at the root of why they may have histamine issues and what are some solutions they could put in place right now. So thanks for watching. And if you know anyone who could benefit from catching some quick bite info on histamine mediated issues, then I invite you to share this video with them because I am all about word of mouth. It is the only way that my work gets out. And so I'd love nothing more than to be of service to those who are struggling with histamine issues as I did. Oh, it's not an easy thing, but it's a ridiculously fascinating thing, if I do say so. Thanks for catching me today, and I'll be here again next Tuesday at 1 p.m. to do yet another Tuesday Live. In the meantime, have a great week. We'll see you next time. Salut, à bientôt!